Hi, and welcome everybody to the Kernel Summit session. I'm Thorsten Lehmhus, or pronounce it as you like, I don't care much. And I'm talking about uh, Linux kernel regression tracking uh, um, efforts that I've did in, a few, uh, in the last year and a few related things. And um, yeah, the uh, talk will basically have three parts. The first one is just giving a quick overview of my work. The second are some best practice I took from, um, I have drawn from that work. And the third is more of a discussion style where I want to discuss a few problem errors or, or everything you want to discuss. Note that we, uh, I have to leave after, right after the talk because I'm giving a talk at the OS Open Source Summit as well. A uh, bit of this kind of scheduling conflict, but uh, I'll hope to be back at lunch again. And uh, beyond, I'll try to rush through the first two parts because uh, all the main infos in the slides anyway. So my recent regression tracking efforts. Since uh, about one year, I'm tracking re regression reports for the Linux kernel again. I did it already in 2017 for a while. <clears throat> uh, back then I did it completely manual and manually in my spare time, which was really frustrating and a lot of work. So this time I tried to automate, automate things a little bit and wrote a bot, uh, Rexbot it's called, uh, that uh, does um, some work for me, and it's yeah. It, I try to not make it yet another bug tracker, but obviously, obviously it is. Uh, but it's designed to easily create no additional work for Linux kernel developers because yeah, they have much on their plate already and don't want to deal with Bugzilla uh, or web interfaces. So yeah, that's why I really try to to um, tailor it for that. Obviously, someone needs to tell the spot about regression uh, regression reports. And Italy, the reporter can do that by uh, including a paragraph like uh, the, the one you see here at the bottom, where you specify the version when, when a regression was uh, started to happen. If the regression was bisected, you can specify it as well. And uh, you can do it for um, um, tell Rexport about uh, reports from other people as well, uh, with a, uh, by including a, a small carrot at the end. And uh, Baxillas um, and uh, tickets and arbitrary links um, um, are supported by Rexport now as well. So, um, uh, telling Rexport about uh, the report is actually the, <coughs> all the manual overhead in the EDL case. Um, um, but, but right now it's mostly me that's doing it and adding all the reports I find to the uh, tracking. I look, for, look out for reports on the re regression mailing list, on law, and on bacillacarnal.org. Um, when, once I edit the reports, I, the Rexbot looks out for, for replies to the, report, to the reports, either, either on the mailing list or on, on Bacilla, but also uh, looks for patches that are posted or committed uh, that point to the track regression using the link tag. Yeah, and in the latter case, when, if a patch is committed um, with a pop, uh, appropriate link tag that uh, points to the report, yeah, then the regression is likely resolved and Rexbot considered it done. And if you wonder, yes, that's actually what link tags are for. There was a bit of confusion with that, but Linus recently uh, clarified that a few times. Um, I'm just showing three mails from him here with the mails below it. If you're interested in details, what he said there, uh, so look at the slides later and follow the links to see what he actually said. He really um, said that, that those links are important to him because he wants to understand how the fix came into being and what, what, what the backstory was. It's actually why I um, improved the documentation a little bit to make sure the people um, really know how, how to use the link tag. Uh, so in submitting patches, clarified this, uh, this part. Um, it, it's more clear now than, than a year ago. And uh, if you wonder, oh, why don't we use a tag like Backlink or something that um, ne was never supported uh, in the, uh, or never officially done in the Linux kernel? A few people did that. Uh, but Linus recently confirmed that he uh, uh, clarified that he doesn't want that and doesn't want to make uh, um, people uh, update random tag tags. So don't use backlinks, references, uh, or things like that. Italy check patch uh, would actually use um, uh, uh, warn if pe uh, people about it and just say, tell them uh, just use link instead. Um, my Perl skills, uh, Perl skills are actually not that good. And is that anybody looking for something? Fun to do on on a few uh, on the evening or two maybe would be I would be glad if somebody could do that and uh, take a look into this and submit a patch. Yeah, and, and the regressions the Rexbox then tracks. Actually, it compiles on a, on a web page where it shows it. This is an overview, and each regression there's uh, more details. And um, yeah, 
This uh, web interface actually makes it pretty obvious for me if things stall before the fix was applied. And um, yeah, then I show up and, and prod things and uh, make sure <laughs> it gets running again and um, um, talk to developers. And if nothing works, I get Linux involved directly, which hopefully doesn't, uh, which luckily it doesn't happen that often, but sometimes it's needed. Yeah, everybody can actually interact with Rexbot using commands in a reply to the report. Uh, here are a few commands, like you can tell, some, for example, when by fix by, which commit fixes a regression or updates when, when the um, regression started to happen or give it a special t title or, <coughs> or point to other threats that, should, uh, that Rexbot should monitor. Yeah, if you want to know more about Rexbot, check out the Getting Started Guide on GitLab or the reference documentation that explains all those things in more detail. The uh, thing is, sadly, Rexport is still young and has many warts. One of the main reasons I'm not really a good programmer, but yeah, I think I'm doing something that a lot of people want, and it, it works, and it, it, it does a trick, yeah. And um, another reason is it also has some deficits, uh, because, yeah, it's just me mainly working on it, and regression tracking itself takes some time. One of the main ones, it's, uh, doesn't, it's not really useful for subsystem maintainers. That's something on my to-do list, but um, that will take a while before I get to that because there are quite a few other things that I need to take care of. Um, <clears throat> uh, first, uh, here's a rough roadmap for Rexbot. For example, one thing I hopefully sooner or later will work on is uh, GitLab support because uh, um, graphics um, drivers, developers um, use a GitLab instance, instance on freedesktop.org to track the arm, uh, the arm bugs for the Linux kernel. So they escape me right now, but uh, sooner or later, I hope, hopefully, um, we'll get to that as well. Um, in the end, Rexbox makes uh, regression tracking for me, me a whole lot easier already. It's still, still a lot of manual and tedious work, and that's why it's kind of still on a best effort basis. Um, and uh, yeah, but it does it, um, it it's worth it, I think, it, the, the efforts make a real difference because quite a number of reports I've seen would have fallen through the cracks or only addressed much later. Uh, so thanks again for sponsoring the Rexpot idea to the European Union. They sponsored me to bring this up for, for NGI Pointer. Um, that project en ended in, in March, and these days Meta is um, going up to, to sponsor my work to make sure I can continue because uh, it's considered important by the Linux kernel developers. That's basically the overview about Rexbot, um, quick best practices um, for handling regressions. Actually, my thoughts made me write two texts about regressions and handling them um, that, I, that were added to the Linux kernel documentation. One is actually more for, for users. It's uh, about reporting regressions and explaining what a regression is to ordinary users. And the other is um, mostly about handling regressions. And that's the one I'll focus here uh, on here because there are a few things that are important for, for, for developers and maintainers. And it's not wide, widely known, <coughs> really, so I'll give it a few minutes. One of the important ones, so something that helps me a lot, is if you CC uh, uh, the regressions mailing list on, re on regression reports, because then actually I'm a, I become aware of the report and can add it to the tracking. Otherwise, I have to look everywhere to find the regressions, and that, that's obviously I'm, I always miss some, some regressions. Another thing, if you want to do, um, you could tell immediately get um, Rexbot involved and um, making a track the regressions when you see the ma mailing list. Uh, that's actually, actually explained in the handling regressions document in the kernel. Uh, I don't want to uh, get into the detail here. Let's just look it up um, there. When fixing a regression, that's also the important, yeah, just remember to use the link tag because, yeah, Linus wants them, Rexbot relies on them. If you miss it, I have to catch up everything and check, hey, is this regression finally fixed and walk myself uh, to do the, to the, to the, through the commit log. And that's really uh, manual work I'd like to avoid because it's, uh, yeah, just waste of time kind of. And uh, so, in other words, if you use reported by you, in most of the cases, want to link to the um, to the report using a link tag. Same again, eagerly check patch would um, um, suggest that, but isn't doing so. So, if any volunteers are here, I'd be glad about that. Another thing is, um, if you fix a regression that has also made its way into the stable tree. And uh, remember to CC the stable tree. Um, I talked with Sasha about it. He, he said the fixes tag is not enough. 
Uh, it will often do the Tyric, um, but the patch might fall, sil might be silently dropped if it doesn't apply for, for some reason. And Greg also recently replied on the, on the mailing list um, that it's not enough. Yeah. Um, now we can get to the most important part that it's fixed regressions in a reasonable amount of time. And obviously what's reasonable um, depends on the, on, on the individual regression. Uh, the handling regressions document actually has a, um, a section, section with a few rules of thumb there. And the short and rough version is often it's a week or two. Uh, for some regressions, more time is okay. Um, but for, for um, many other, for, for some crucial regression, which is just should take uh, maybe two or three days, ideally. And that's not till the fix is reviewed or something, which is really till the fix is uh, merged in mainline, because that's, that's the point only when, when, it, when the fix gets to the user. So that's the important milestone. To achieve that, uh, keep the following things in mind. Um, prioritize the work on regressions of all other Linux kernel work. That's nothing really new, because yeah, we're doing it for the for the users, as Linux uh, once famously um, 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 explained. Um, that's it's a bit an older male that's actually also quoted in the handling of regression document. He really says, "Without users, um, your program is not a program. It's a pointless piece of code that you might throw uh, <laughs> well throw away." It's a bit over the top maybe, but in the end he's right. We're doing it for the users and uh, they need those fixes. Yeah, and that's also why regressions in the production releases often should have um, more uh, a higher priority and be fixed with, within a week. So higher, higher than, than uh, mainline RC corners because developers can help themselves. Um, and ordinary users on the other end often are not um, really possible, uh, are not in position to help themselves. And um, uh, yeah, that's again the user aspect, and to show that um, we, um, here's a quick timeline how some of our three distributions recently switched to to um, to the latest um, uh, uh, mainline series that was 5.19. Uh, OpenSUSE Tumbleweed, for example, just switched um, 11 days after the release, even before five, uh, before the first stable release came out, before before 5.19.1, uh, and um, Arch Linux just just switch, switched a few days later, and uh, yeah, Fedora uh, two weeks later, and between then 5.18 um, even got EOL. So those users actually have no way to go back to the old stable series once the new the, the distribution switched to the new new series. That's why it's so important to get them get it fixed for them, and uh, especially when the previous series becomes EOL or is EOL already. Um, to make sure the regressions are fixed by then, ideally. Otherwise, they, they run into trouble. As, as I said here, that happened uh, even a week before Fedora switches, uh, switched to 5.19. And uh, sure, somebody, some of you might say, it's, oh, why don't they go to, back to the latest long-term kernel? But that's often not, not, not an option either, because it's either um, not easily available or might lack required features. Yeah. Sure, the uh, users could could stay on their previous working kernel, but as you know, most of you likely know, we, we fix security vulnerabilities every few days. So after a week or two, it's likely uh, becoming a very uh, bad idea. Yeah, and that's why regressions in the in the latest production <coughs> releases uh, need to often need to be often fixed uh, faster than those in mainline. So, fix regressions in a reasonable amount of time. So. The easiest way to do that is often simply reverting the, uh, the culprit. It's simply easy and quick. Doesn't work always, but that's that's how it is. Um, the, especially, it prevents more users and also de developers um, some running into no, no, known issues. And um, uh, um, to give a bad example about this, that there was recently a problem in the SCSI subsystem um, with some rework there that actually caused um, a, a suspend to break on, on many machines for, for uh, two um, RC releases um, from 6.0. And that was actually, um, the revert was actually posted two days after RC1 got out, but in the end it took um, 12 days um, to, to get it mainlined. And uh, yeah, that sh shouldn't happen because in, um, um, if you look closer at the timeline, there were seven people, seven people I know of that bisected the regression and had to deal with with, with, uh, with the pain that's uh, bisection and spend a lot of time time for them and that, those are only the ones I won't, I know there are likely more people so that could have been easily uh, prevented if um, if the patch would have been reverted much more quickly here are the references if anyone 
anyone wants to go and uh, look into the details. <coughs> Another aspect is uh, mainline the fixes quickly. Um, the handling regressions um, document mentioned that, as I already <coughs> mentioned earlier. So, thing is, I'm regularly seeing fixes lingering on, on mailing lists or in developer trees for weeks, which is especially bad um, if the fix actually needs to be backported to stable to, to fixes in a, in a production release. And that doesn't help anyone. Um, and um, I've asked a few maintainers, and they sometimes said, hey, I'm only, only sending my, my, my changes upstream every two or three weeks. And yeah, the thing is, in, if you have a regression fix among, uh, in, in your pile of pitch, uh, patches that no, need to go to Linus, simply send them more often and uh, to, to, to Linus or, or your higher level maintainers. Uh, or even uh, ask your higher level maintainer or Linus to pick it up directly. Linus will, really won't mind, I'm pretty sure, unless you do it every week, uh, then it's likely something he won't like. Um, also, developers um, should um, sometimes, in my opinion, th um, uh, ignore the subsystem maintainer if he's missing an act, uh, missing an action, and um, send patches directly to Linux. Um, that's, there's another regression that's actually actually an example from April. Uh, something uh, with the G GPIO went wrong, and um, a lot of uh, laptops actually didn't wake up um, from from suspend. And actually, there was a patch that was uh, backported to stable. And um, as Mario here complained, it was breaking people left and right because many distros um, um, picked, it, picked the stable uh, kernel up. And yeah, it was really a problem. Some people had to actually uh, drain their battery to get, get their uh, laptop working again. And that's also um, a regression that basically took two weeks um, to get fixed, it actually was um, merged for 5.18 RC2, and um, two days later already came into a stable kernel, and um, or three days later, and uh, actually one one day later the regression was reported, and uh, a, bit, a little bit later on the, on the on the day the, the fix was even proposed. So by then it could have been easily reverted. And I'm pretty sure Greg in such a situation, if the fix is mainline, would would quickly release, relative quickly release a new stable kernel to get such a big problem out of the way. And, but in the end, it took uh, two weeks again to get the fix mainlined and also two, 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 two weeks, uh, or yeah, then three day, days after that it was fixed and stable. And that's because the maintainer simply um, had missed the patch and, and the reports about the regression because it was in the spam folder. And um, that, that's, for example, one of the regressions where my interrupt, uh, um, my involvement helped because I told Mario at some point to uh, directly submit the patch to Linus, and he actually a few hours later picked it up. And yeah, that, that's uh, it. It worked out somehow, but it's not really not ideal how how this uh, worked. Yeah, and um, some maintenance. Uh, another aspect here is. Um, even let re main, uh, regression fixes wait till the next merge window. Sure, sometimes that will be necessarily if it's something uh, big or something that's not that that bad. Um, but I see it quite often, especially with the Bluetooth and the uh, Wi-Fi maintainers. And uh, that's really quite bad for users if they're waiting for the fix or getting it back ported to stable. And the thing is, these changes are often, in the end, uh, get, in my opinion, less testing anyway. Um, because they're uh, backported to stable shortly after RC1 is out, that are those big patches, the stable releases with thousands of patches, no, with, with uh, uh, hundreds of patches. Um, but the thing is, even currently, uh, developers sometimes fear testing RC1, so maybe those uh, patches are not, not uh, tested that much, and uh, it might be really uh, better to get them into the into mainline late in the, in the cycle. So. Those were the uh, two first parts of the series, what I'm in the time, uh, but now I'm getting to the more dis discussion style, so problems I noticed or face. Um, uh, quick explanation, I'm having a session on, on regressions at the maintainer summit tomorrow, and um, everything we discuss here, I'll try to summarize there, and if there's something you want me to bring up there, just let me know, either now or, or, or later in the day, and uh, I, I'll try to do my best, and yeah. Any questions, things to discuss, or, or, or um, remarks on, on, on what I outlined and explained uh, so far, so on Rexbox and its approach maybe, or on, on the described usage, usage of the link tags, or on the, on the time frame?
frames when regressions need to be handled? Anyone, anything? Uh, so I guess I'll, I'll kick off the question with one. Um, most people generally think of regressions as things that broke in the last merge window. But from the perspective of many users, they may consider, well, I'm using the latest LTS and I found a bug. And, you know, the line between a regression and a bug report sometimes gets a little bit thin. Yeah. Um, and obviously, if someone's reporting a bug for 4.9, that's very, very different than, say, 5.15. So what, where do you think the boundaries are of where you think Regbox is most ideally used? <laughs> um, I think if the regression actually was in 4.9 originally, then tracking it... Um, or happened before that then yeah. I, I think it, it makes sense and it might make sense to to track regressions that were intro, introduced in the um, um, 4.9 series but if it's more more a bug than than a regression then then I, I don't add it to Rex about because yeah we all know there are um, some bugs in the old kernels that never will be fixed because the fix is too hard or too complex to get backported right. and um, yeah I have a talk on, on on bug reporting later today on the open source summit and there I actually I uh, mentioned that um, um, there are bugs that are not, uh, uh, fi fixes that are not backported. I guess mine's more of a, a PSA. I wanted to mention um, kernel CI, and I was hoping that maintainers would start using it more to detect regressions and maybe encourage their submitters, especially if they're fixing regressions, to land tests in kernel CI so that we can catch them in the future. Ideally, you've, uh, those regressions kernel CI uh, finds get fixed before the fix hits, hits mainline, yeah. That's the ideal, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so more of that. Yeah, I was going to sort of ask a obliquely related question. It's like we're looking at doing pre-merge CI with the graphics stack, but probably using GitLab because we have enough infrastructure already. But do you think we've got enough tracking at your level that you would notice? Like if pre-merge CI became a thing, you think you would be able to see a, like a, de a decrease in regressions at this at that level? Or so, how to encourage other subsystems to get on the pre-merge CI path, and how to get you know? Do you think we would would notice a dip in our numbers if we did this, or some way to prove that it's worthwhile? Because it's a lot of effort. <laughs> yeah, right. Right now, I'm kind of staying out of the way with the kernel CI people and all the CI people because. There's, I'm focusing more on the user's point of view to make sure that regressions that are reported um, um, uh, are actually getting fixed. I think once a regression hits mainline uh, or even next maybe, then it might be okay to track it with Rexbot to make sure it's really getting fixed before it hits users easily. And, um, um, but obviously, it needs to be a, a regression that, that um, users actually face where, because some of the CI systems find theoretical issues and um, not, neither the developers nor I want to, to uh, waste the money on, 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 on tracking down things that don't happen in the wild. So when it comes down to uh, stable releases in particular, you have an, an issue that uh, sometimes something comes in as a regression and you'd think that the easiest thing to do is just to revert that patch. But really what that patch is, is, is a bug fix for a whole bunch of users and it breaks a whole bunch of different users. And so you end up with this, or do I revert this now or do I get it fixed now? And if we can get those things fixed quicker and pushed in, um, you know, those are the fixes that a lot of times will end up sitting in a, oh yeah, we're waiting for you know the next merge window, or they'll sit in a tree. You know, I've seen a lot of stuff in the DRM stuff just kind of sit there and and never make it to mainline for weeks. And, and yeah, that's why I mentioned that quick, quickly mentioned uh, getting the fixes mainlined is important. And regarding stable, um, I, I showed this picture. Um, one of the things I'm going to propose tomorrow is um, that we revert fixes more quickly. That, that's something I want to ask Linus. Um, but also allow uh, um, patches or things that are ca causing regressions to get reapplied, maybe like one, and, one or two weeks or maybe even three uh, outside of the mer merge window to make sure um, developers don't fear regressions that much because that's why many of them try to find a fix 
uh, for, the, for the problem. And uh, instead of just reverting the patch and fixing it and then getting both in. And that's also, I guess, what, what will help uh, Greg here. Uh, if, if there's a revert, you can simply backport the revert. And um, if it's tagged properly, and uh, when the, 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 um, the fix that actually caused the regression in the first, uh, the, 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 the patch that actually caused the regression comes back, he can uh, backport it as well if it's just properly tagged. And that's, so it's easy for him as well. Right. That could speed things up, I think, quite a lot. Yeah, we end up in place, I mean, in Fedora, I've, I've a few times said, all right, well, I'm going to revert this patch for, you know, stable until it gets added back into stable or there's a fix. But a couple of times you, you get that and you're like, all right, well, I'm going to do that revert. And then you have this whole group of users saying, no, 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 that, that fixed my thing. Okay. And then you end up in this weird. Right. Yeah, that's fair. Uh, but I mean, the old bug was also a regression. So at some point it's. Well, yeah. you know. <laughs> Sorry. So I said, leave the old bug. And that's the idea. And sometimes I leave bugs in stable on purpose because I want to force the maintainer to actually get a fix in Linus's tree. Right. So I won't revert it in stable. A little pressure point. Yeah. But sometimes it's not good. It's a fine line to play there. It, it depends on the bug. And so that's, sometimes it's, it, it depends on the bug. Sometimes I will totally. do the like revert. Like the GPIO laptop. I, if I had known about that at the time, I would have quickly gotten that in stable. Yeah. Sometimes I'll pull it out of Fedora just until there is a fix in stable and then I'll put it back in. Yeah. But let me know too. Yeah. Okay. You don't tell me. Okay. That was, I want to know that that was a bug. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So I know you're much too polite to do this, but I'm going to ask anyway. Are there subsystems that are doing really badly in terms of regressions that they're adding? Yeah. And then, and then I'll make it easier a little bit and say, are there subsystems that are really tracking this well that we want to hold up and say, look, everybody do it like this. These are the best practices. And you over there, maybe we'll make Greg say the bad words. Uh, you over there, like start doing this now. Maybe let Greg out, yeah? There are some subsystems doing really well. Some file systems, I will call out ButterFS, is actually doing a really good job. <laughs> <laughs> um, they do a good job. I will call out Bluetooth as being a horrible pile of crap. Actually, Bluetooth, <laughs> Bluetooth was on my mind as well. Bluetooth like wireless is, sometimes. But, but I, we called him out publicly to get the company that was funding the developers to actually give them the time to do the work. They weren't being allowed to do the work. And that's not the developer's fault. That's the management's fault. They're getting better, but Bluetooth still has a ways to go. The regressions in Bluetooth, I hit it on my own systems, every RC1. Yeah, and subsystems, I, I only- well, I There's a couple of other, some other ones are yeah. good. MM is good. There's a couple other ones. Yeah, KVM is really good. And I, I got the impression that the subsystems that are uh, quite distant from, from Linux are the worst because they don't get yelled at by Linux. And that's, for example, the case with uh, Bluetooth because they are going to the network tree and- Yeah, Bluetooth so maybe has like we should three talk steps to... removed. Wi-Fi is getting a little bit better. But then the network developers are very responsive and network is also very good, but it's just getting it to them yeah. is harder and some of their the, CI. And... The, the network maintainers, for, for their stuff, they are often quite They're good. very good, yeah, it's yeah. There's a lot of good ones. I, I guess, you know, like we mentioned CI before, you know, it goes hand in hand with regressions. I, I would hope that the people with the most regressions are the most interested in adding more CI so that we can get out of this, you know, cycle, cycle of sadness, right? Yeah. <laughs> Oh, but Bluetooth is really hard for CI because most of these are de broken devices and broken boards and no new hardware and yeah. and a new feature broke a different board and I, I feel for Bluetooth it it's a tough problem. <laughs> Hi. So what happens when you have some hardware uh, that has some features? You enable them. Uh, in the kernel, uh, user space is using those features, uh, and then later on you discover that those features are uh, can corrupt the system in general because they can heat it up too much or or they produce bad data. Uh, so you need to disable those features. User space will be broken uh, because they rely on these ex these features. That's a regression. That's not a regression. What's the guidance here? So. The, the um, document I mentioned for the users about reporting regressions, that actually explains the line when a regression starts. For example, with 
if you enable an incompatible feature, then it's obviously uh, not a regression because you have to use make old config. And, 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 and when it comes to, to user interface, and uh, um, it sometimes gets tricky because you add something and then something breaks and you revert or, or you have or reverting um, would cause regressions for others and then you have to, to, to look into, to, to, um, into the details what is the least evil in, in the particular case. But, but I think I didn't really answer there. So just put something uh, particular in. Let's say you have a camera that has a, 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 what? a camera. A camera, yeah, that has two resolutions, a big and a small, and you realize later in the in your development process that the big resolution breaks the hardware, so you need to disable it. The problem is there's user space applications that depends on this big uh, resolution, and that suddenly is gone. Yeah, then you have to sometimes I, I'd say you have to find some way it's tricky. to it, it's fix it without it's breaking. I mean, you can also say, hey, we didn't have this working last kernel. Sorry. It's still not working now. You're yeah. going to burn up your hardware. Uh, it's a case by case basis, but that's actually really rare. Mm -hmm. I, it, 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 as far as what I've seen, I, that's a very odd thing. Normally, you can always say this feature is being ripped out, or we actually we mark some features as broken because they weren't quite ready. We, we're infamous for doing that. Just talk to the user. I mean, people are reasonable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but, but it's not rare. It's Oh. These kind of things, especially with uh, hardware that implements uh, standards, is not rare. So then let me point out, I never see those fixes landing in stable because video for Linux, I never get patches. That's a subsystem that I know never ends up in stable because nobody ever backsports anything. So I'm not seeing anything breaking in stable from that. And maybe in Linux history, but then you have the whole RC series to, to work that out, right? Very rare. So I see a media patch. Oh, sound. Sound is a very good subsystem for stable, too. <laughs> They're really good at that. OK, I have a few more things on, on my list. I'd actually like to move on a little, at least. I, I'm sure I won't go through all of it. Um, one thing I'm having, I, I, I saw uh, during my regression tracking efforts is that um, that Baxilla uh, kernel.org kind of is kind of a problem. Um, I'm kind of watching out for reports there currently, but um, it's kind of a mess sometimes, and I think it's really bad for us. And uh, that's something I want to discuss here, what, what to do about it, because, um, yeah, there are really go uh, some good regressions report there that apparently no developer actually looked at. I actually uh, looked closer for two weeks uh, some time ago and posted it to the, to, to, to the uh, a summary to the Linux kernel mailing list that was a few months ago. And um, there were, from most of the regressions I found, uh, never got a reply from, the, from a developer within a week. And there were really good reports among that. Thing is with bugzilla.com.org, I don't know if you know, it's, uh, the server itself is well maintained, um, but uh, products and components and the fault assignees and the things are all heavily outdated because there's nobody really taking care of it. And uh, the thing is, uh, the server was ne never really became official place to, to report, report bugs, at least for most of the kernel. Uh, about 20 entries in the maintainer's uh, file actually tell users to, to file bugs there. And a few more developers uh, take a look there. But in the end, uh, many reports, uh, either regressions or bug, uh, bugs, uh, never get, uh, get a reply from, from the developer. And yeah, Constantine clarified a few things. And that's not his job as his admin team to, to maintain the maintain the list of uh, components of the thing. And it's simply that um, um, uh, uh, nobody d does that. And I don't want to blame any de developer for not looking there because yeah, most of subsystem never committed to um, uh, look there. But on the other hand, it's uh, bad for our rep rep reputation and scares testers away if all those reports um, uh, get ignored. Even some kernel developers sometimes don't know of, about the semi-official state or more unofficial state of the bug tracker and uh, file bugs there and then wonder why they get ignored. Uh, currently, I look out for a regression layer, um, but it's, uh, it's quite a time-consuming task and I ignore everything that's not a regression uh, uh, because yeah, there's only so much hour in a day. And uh, that's why I think, um, isn't it long overdue that, that we so do something about bugzilla kernel.org somehow? Yeah, I don't know what. Um, 
I'm pretty sure quite a few developers will actually uh, be happy about some change as well. So quick ch um, show of hands, who is awake? <laughs> yeah. So um, who thinks Bugzilla.com.org is fine as it is right now? Does any hand go up? No. Yeah? yeah? I think it's fine. Fine for... Oh, for yeah, that's because your right. subsystem uses it. So really, our really subsystem cool. uses it, and yeah. we track them. We track Bugzilla, and we have for decades. The problem is somebody files a bug in our subsystem, and we go, which is power management and ACPI, and we go, oh, this is a Wi-Fi bug. We We... Put it under Wi-Fi, and then it it just it it's the black hole. The but, other category, but, but, exactly. Plus, you, but, plus you're doing it wrong, but, right? Because you know that the Wi-Fi developers don't use Bugzilla. So yeah. Why, some why, do, why, some why don't. Why are, you why are you consigning this bug to somewhere that you know will it will never be addressed? You should be forwarding it to. Okay, the then delete developer. the category for Wi-Fi. Yes. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. That's that would actually be something. Yeah. Um, and, 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 and I think in, in the header, like a, a, in the HTML for bugs of the rock kernel talk, and you say, if there is no component for your bug, that, that component doesn't use Bugzilla, you need to report it to their mailing list. Yeah, I, I guess we, yeah. But in the end, then, uh, then we stripped down Bugzilla to yeah, ACPI, PM, and PCI. Those are the three main subsystems that are using it. Is uh, EXT4. X, oh, yeah, okay. and EXT4, it goes to our mailing list. Right, so, ah. and I like it going to our mailing list because very often developers <laughs> reply to the message when they see it on the mailing list and it auto puts the but, comment in yeah, Bugzilla. Yeah. And sometimes there are long running bugs where Bugzilla is one of the better places to find things, at least pre-lore, yeah. right? Now that we have lore, maybe it's not as important. But yeah, we use it at ext4 and it helps because Anything to the component goes to the mailing list, not to an individual developer. That works for some subsystems, but other subsystems do that, and that's a black hole as well. So it's kind of a <laughs> mess. But I mean, yeah, we could keep it running for, for those subsystems that are really interested in it. I guess it should be easier. Just someone, somebody, I guess I'm volunteering by, by actually bringing this up to, to clean up the, the uh, list of components and products. and. Oh, what do people think? Or should we close it completely? What? Uh, ben? Okay. Well, <laughs> if you close it completely, we'd have to reopen it immediately. So, no, that's completely unacceptable. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But is it really worse for for the few um, subsystems that are using it to? Do you want power management to work on your laptop? I mean, the no, no. <laughs> Didn't, I didn't want to apply that, sorry. But I mean, the, the, the DRM guys, for example, went to, to GitLab. They have their own instance. Some people use GitHub. Would that be an option for you? Or do you? I mean, I don't want to shut it down tomorrow. It will be discussed. I just wanted to get a feeling what people want. Because I don't like this. Yeah, mess. I have I guess to say, we have tracked thousands of bugs in it. And it's, it's, it's not the, it's not Bugzilla or the server or even the administration. It's the no, human okay. use of the of the tool. Yeah. You're either yeah, using it if you're not. If somebody's not using it, it's not going to work. If you're using it, it, it can work. Oh. I think it basically started when Linus said, Oh, I only look at email and Bugzilla's uncool. And then all the fanboys said, Oh, I, I want to be like Linus. And you know, that just sort of set the culture. <laughs> yeah, no, no, we, we created Bugzilla when it was like every project had to have a bug tracking system and three quarters of us said, we hate this, we just stick to email. I mean, you were there, it was, it was a mix at the time, but some subsystems tried it and worked. I, I mean, I'll admit USB, it's a black hole, but we do forward it to our mailing list and it's still a black hole because everything marked is, comes as a USB bug. But it's just, up to, I mean, I'm, all for, I'm for keeping it alive for the three subsystems if you provide some help to actually maintain the server. I mean, it's a dead server. That's the big problem too. We have nobody doing the work. So maybe Intel can sponsor some system in work. I mean, that, that's the other side of this. Nobody's actually sponsoring this to get it done. Uh, well, that should be easy. Okay, that that'd be good. But I mean, maybe just we cut it out and leave it for the three, four subsystems that matter, and that's only drop-down boxes. And 
Yeah. Go so uh, unfortunately, Constantine isn't here. Yeah. My, my understanding from talking to him a while back is the email bridge between the mailing lists and Bugzilla, which as far as I'm concerned is the one thing that makes it usable, is a custom hack that is degrading. It makes it difficult to upgrade to new versions of Bugzilla because that's not an upstream uh, feature of Bugzilla. It's something that somebody hacked a long time ago. And, and Bugzilla development kind of stalled also in general upstream yeah. things. So in the long term, we might need to look for something different anyway. Right. Yep. So what should I tell? What should I tell tomorrow? That some subsystems still want to use it, you but an yeah, some some want it, some don't. Yeah. Go from there, figure it out. Yeah, I mean, there are other email-based bug tracking systems. I use Debian bug tracking system for all the Debian bugs. It works well for me, but like you know, I don't think we should talk about technology as much as let the technologists figure out what meets our requirements if we can actually give them a coherent set of requirements, <laughs> right? Let, let Constantine figure out what's the best way to help us, right? Just, we need to tell Constantine what we want. Anything of, I still have? Do the first bullet. Huh? Do the first bullet. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Len, would you, if you're so relying on it, would you help with the first bullet? or your, your ACPI and PM, because somebody needs to keep an eye on things or at least clean things up. Well, we have a couple categories of things, right? We've got stuff yeah, filed I mean, against us. I mean, for, for those subsystems that don't use it, that's actually a black hole because that's annoying for everybody. Well, I don't really know how to pull off the Band-Aid to, you know, say last week we, we categorized something in another component and it's a black hole. What do you do with that? So, yeah, there's got to be a house Some, cleaning. There's got to be a flag some, day. Somebody has to take take a look at it and and monitor it if things are working and just scratch the components and products that are not working to make sure people don't report bugs that are never forwarded to anyone. Yeah, you they, you can they, kill the you can kill the product or category without subsystem without killing the history, right? Uh, I, I I'd say so. Yeah, I'm not sure you can. I've got a small bit of experience with Red Hat's Bugzilla, and we. The maintainer is a friend of mine, and he says, like, yeah, the database is where all that stuff is, and if you remove things from the database, you can't get the history back. You could, you could maybe archive the whole, the whole of the things. Or try can't to can't you hide it somehow? I don't know. Not not, not, not 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 a decent way, because then how does the searching going to work, and how do people find the old bugs? And ah, okay. So the schema is very, it's very, you know, it's, it's going to be intricate. I don't think it's as easy as just going in and saying we don't use these components anymore. Yeah. No. Just rename the component to obsolete space name. Well, obsolete. Rename the obs rename the component to obsolete space name. That should should work. Yeah. And do that for every single component, and then the components that want to be in, they remove the obsolete part. Okay. Okay. So I, I don't think a lot. I don't think we want to call it like obsolete Bluetooth, right? You know, <laughs> there's nothing to replace. So Main I mean, only. It, we have two different problems here. The first one is we need uh, to have Bugzilla reflect how people actually want to maintain their projects. And maybe it sounds like the best answer there is some kind of auto response to every Bugzilla in a uh, area that isn't well tracked in Bugzilla of like, hey, we see you filed a bug. It's probably better to go to this mailing list instead. Um, and then have communities that actually want to use it opt in. Uh, the second problem is how do we make Constantine's life easier? And we should just ask him, like, we can't decide how to make something maintainable we he needs to make some suggestions and then you know we can get together on whether or not those suggestions work for us and i know we're out of time yes. yeah we're out of time yes thank you okay thank you. great <laughs>